Hello and welcome. My name is Sasha Michelle White. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Today I will be presenting the project I developed for a master's degree in environmental studies at the University of Oregon, a first aid kit for the fire prone. I had the great fortune to be advised on this project by professors Emily Eliza Scott, Stephanie Lemonager, and Colin Ives. While I completed the academic portion of my work this spring, I view the project as an ongoing collaboration whose creative and ecological engagement continues. And now I will go ahead and share my screen. Okay. First aid kit for the fire prone, a material and conceptual investigation of the slippages between art, ecology, and medicine. Since plants first climbed onto land over 400 million years ago, they've contended and collaborated with fire. Early humans and indigenous peoples around the world, including the bands of the Kayapuya, the people of the tall grass of the Willamette Valley, on whose unceded territories I reside, intervened in this plant fire relationship, harnessing fire to shape their landscapes. The Kayapuya tended this valley for millennia with digging sticks and with fire, burning prairies, burning savannas, burning woodlands as ecological, social, and material practice and continue to do so today. But most of the lands once tended by the Kayapuya and by the Klamath and by the other tribes of what is now called Oregon have been radically altered by the forcible removal of their stewards and by the imposition of settler colonial patterns of land use. A century of fire suppression, prairies and grasslands converted to industrialized modes of grazing and agriculture Forests damaged by mining, logging, and the loss of beaver. Lands infiltrated by roads and recreationists, by exotic plants, by climate change. These alterations have not excluded fire from this landscape, but they have dramatically shifted when and how and with how much force fire returns. And aesthetic. First aid kit for the fire prone is an art centered project that explores the slippages between art and ecology and medicine within the context of Oregon's fire prone landscapes. The project builds from the intimate connections between land and health emphasized within vernacular medical systems and from the ancient interchangeability of aesthetic and medicinal substances. The kit comprises a set of object medicines, which engages the plants and earths who thrive in the disturbance of fire, and a set of corresponding poems and protocols, which serves as the kit's instruction manual. Embracing fire as medicine, medicine as aesthetic provocation, and aesthetic provocation as ecological process, the project looks beyond the spectacle of flame, beyond the catastrophe of loss, to attend to the multi-species multi materialities of Oregon's fire-prone landscapes. It considers a broad implication of fire-prone as a relationship with embodiment and with flammability that encompasses more or less willingly whole ecosystems and whole ways of being and becoming. While a standard first aid kit implies the repair of a discrete autonomous body, implies the possibility of entering a landscape intact and exiting it untouched, first aid kit for the fire prone centers the coloristic and medicinal properties of the fire prone landscape as long-term multi-species collaborations. 
Through these dynamic sympoietic processes, including the unruly accomplice of landscape fire, this project asks what it means to heal through and with multi-species others, and how this might inflect differently the contemporary discourse of environmental crisis and emergency. Wound tending. First aid kit for the fire prone is grounded in my experience as an herbalist and field ecologist, wildland firefighter and prescribed fire practitioner, wilderness first responder, and native plant propagator. The project is materially and conceptually centered in three field sites. The Nature Conservancy Saican Marsh Preserve in the Ponderosa Pine Ecosystems of South Central Oregon traditional homeland of the Klamath tribe. The city of Eugene Suzanne Arley Park in the Gary Oak Woodlands of the Southern Willamette Valley, part of the Kayapuya Territory. And the Mackenzie River Trust, Finrock Reach in the fire scarred riparian zone of the Holiday Farm Fire ancestral travel corridor of the Kayapuya people. In these places, and in various gardens and fields of Eugene, I have begun my own collaboration with the plants and earths of the fire-prone landscape. I have gathered flowers and scattered seeds, cut branches and dug roots, scraped resin and peeled bark. I have watched and waited, listened and held still. Engaging this range of sites is partially a matter of abundance, of practicality, of permission. But it also highlights the plant's adaptations to varying intensities and frequencies of disturbance, provokes questions of tending and toxicity, and underscores the flammable propensities of all Oregon's landscapes, wild, urban, and in between. First aid kit. In first aid kit for the fire prone, the multi-species inhabitants of the fire prone landscape converse with the global materialities that have directly and indirectly altered these landscapes. Alcohol and glass, beeswax and barbed wire, aluminum, cotton, wool, and silk. The object medicines include a burn salve made with the leaves of balsam root and the resin of ponderosa pine a tincture of arnica for trauma, of yarrow for infection, bandages dyed in the astringency of ceanothus. They engage medicinal plants as antiseptics and aromatics, astringents and bitters, nervines and vulneraries, but also as color. The historically simultaneous use of plants and earths as both colors and medicines is indicated in the origin of the word tincture. Denoting an ethanol extract within herbalism and pharmacy, the word tincture derives from the Latin tingere, to dye or imbue with color or substance. The first aid kit with its object medicines and poetic instruction manual invites entry into the aesthetics of the fire prone landscape not as prescription, but as practice and process. Bandage, bandages, boundaries, hemoglobin is a set of wool and cotton bandages dyed with ceanothus stem bark. Ceanothus is a woody shrub of the Ramnaceae, native to the Pacific Northwest that colonizes even the oxidized soils resulting from high burn severity. The seeds of Ceanothus may lie dormant in the soil for over 200 years until their seed coat is scarred by the heat of fire, allowing them to imbibe water and to germinate. Frankia bacteria infect the roots of Ceanothus and together they fix atmospheric nitrogen and return fertility to fire damaged soils. Barbed wire marks the boundary. 
One must crawl under, leap over. The young elk turns a circle, turns two, builds courage, builds momentum. The life, wild, transgresses. Wrists, cut, risks, gutted. The fire, wild, transgresses. In the presence, hemoglobin shifts red. In the presence, soil ages, grows old, shifts red. The metal opens the cloth, opens the animal body, a bond, an inside and outside. Tannins of manzanita, protein of milk, of blood, metallic soil, rusted wire. Saturate the cloth, shift color, shift hue. The held fire sterilizes, scars, and the seed, scarred, will drink. Only in sweetness, only in crumble, we make the other possible. 87 million years ago, 89 million years ago, the elk turns a circle, turns dense, fertile thickets, only in presence, bodies bound with bodies of others. Frankie awaits for Ceanothus, Ceanothus waits for fire. No Man's Yellow, a women's style firefighter shirt, is made of naturally fire resistant silk, dyed with the inner stem bark of tall Oregon grape. Tall Oregon grape contains the yellow alkaloid berberine, which is both antimicrobial and a bitter stimulant of liver function. Requiring the deaths of more than a thousand silkworms and the bark of more than 40 stems, the shirt was made through the offering of a garden and the help of a friend, with the water of the Mackenzie River and with the power of the Columbia. The making of a shirt requires protective gear, an army, a fleet of ships, hazard pay and overtime, carry a drip torch, walk it back to New England, weave a head fire, a strip fire, dots and lines and staggers. So a shirt of silk. Walk it back to New England. Weave, unweave. Board a ship, undo. Emergency grieving poncho, for one, for two, is also made of silk, dyed in the berries of blue elder, with salt, aluminum, and iron. The berries of elder as medicine are antioxidant and antiviral. The dye as color is fugitive. Each September, as the berries ripen, the poncho will be dyed again. Where the hillside was burned, the vireo will build her nest of grasses and silk, feed her young with her mate, feed on the berries of blue elder. Where the hillside was burned, the salmon will spawn, will begin again in shallow creek beds, follow the shadows of root wads, follow the shadows of fallen trees. Fire is not only loss, not only devastation. It is also nurturance, tending, and transmutation. Beyond catastrophe, beyond flame, the aesthetics of fire are apprehended through the multi-species materialities of the before and the after. Attending to fire, to when and how and with how much force fire returns, is to enter the sympoietic processes of being and becoming that are Oregon's fire-prone landscapes. Attending to fire is to enter the ongoing cycle the ongoing practice of first aid for the fire prone. So to end, I'll read one more poem um, in its uh, fullness. And this one is called Elision of Theory. Fire created fire. Consider disturbance. Consider fire. Found within fire. The spreading conceptions of flammable theory the implications for plants. 
Traditionally, the fossil thrived in moist, weedy extinction in cleared territories of small size and large number, indicative of repeated colonizing, of flooding, of fire, a larger leaf, volatile light, fire, inclusive of fire, fire and the physiologies of fire, feedbacks propelled the globe, becoming fire, a process again from clay and tree, fire, oxygen, high oxygen, vegetation, fire. Fire increases fire with intensity, frequency, fire. Growth, fire, longer fire, adequate fire, regimes into regimes of fire. Fire a cause of herbs and shrubs of rapid reproduction, early fire, open fire, fire promoted fire. It was fire and plants together. Fire and fossils, fire and prairies, ample fire by fossil and furred, flowering evidence increasing, but also loss. Flames moving into extinction or persisting or altered fire an opportunity with fire, early witnessed. Prone to consumption, the flowers, the fossil, resulted incomplete. Resin holds the heat of fire, accepted, correlated, the plant with fire, long-lived fire. The studies of fire conclude fire. Note that fossils are now extinct, that pines burned early, that fires damage and return, the species of fires, the herbaceous, the weedy, continued as fire. The plant survives by fire, whole landscapes do not. Fire through fire, all possess fire or disappear. Bias would change fire with wider reluctance, disturbance, persistence, the elision of theory from charcoal and thought. Thank you.